We now Trump 2020 advisory board member and former FBI Joint Terror Task Force, Steve Rogers. Steve, thanks for joining me. Pleasure to be here. All right, Steve, you're former FBI, you worked on terrorism. Law enforcement said yesterday that they were exploring or they were looking into this shooter's exploration of violent ideologies. What does his social media footprint tell you? Well, what's going to happen is the FBI uh, is certainly going to do a forensic analysis of all his, his electronic equipment, his telephone, his uh, computer, any communication that he's had uh, with any uh, a radical group like Antifa is going to be examined, and then they'll start to connect dots. But I've got to tell you, uh, what I see here is nothing, no one from the Democrat Socialist Party saying anything about this. They're just constantly attacking the president without the totality of information that we are now getting as a result of this report. Right. Well, of course. If the Democrats can't score a political point on it, they're not interested in telling the people the truth. They'd rather focus on something else, use a diversionary tactic. It seems to me that when a terrorist, as this person was, this mass shooter was, we don't mention his name on this show, that when they don't leave a manifesto, when they don't leave a verbal motive, then you do look at their history, correct? You analyze who they spoke to, what they read, who they amplified, in this case, who he tweeted, what he tweeted, what his reaction was to other incidents of terrorism, other mass shootings, his interaction with the violent ideology uh, that Antifa espouses, and that gives you a picture of who this person was. Well, you're exactly right, and, and they're going to build a case based on what they find in the forensic analysis of all his electronic equipment. In addition to that, and here's something troubling, that overwhelming, the overwhelming number of these cases that law enforcement uh, investigates, you find later that there was a lot of information on the internet, in chat rooms, in the, in the, in the, the deep parts of the internet, and a lot of people knew this and said absolutely nothing. And we're now finding that out in uh, the particular case in Dayton where things were said uh, on the internet, but no one reported it. All right. Well, you're talking about the kill list. I mean, the guy left, he made a kill list. He wanted to kill, rape, and skin the bodies of the people on this list. Uh, his classmates knew about this. The school district, reportedly at least, knew about this. I can't believe nothing was done about it. Steve, talk to me a little bit about lone wolf terrorism in, as it relates to mass shootings, because we've seen before, especially in our nation, where we have radical Islamist terrorists who aren't technically part of ISIS, but they commit these acts either in the name of of ISIS or inspired by ISIS. And we've seen the same thing with white supremacist or white supremacy motivated terrorists, where they don't belong necessarily to an official white supremacist organization, but they commit their acts in, in the name of that evil ideology. Do you see that trend here? Do you see, even though he might not have been that we know of, a member of Antifa, that it could be that same sort of, um, uh, that same sort of acceptance or that embrace of that ideology as his motivation? Well, absolutely right. Look, they don't have to be a quote unquote an official member of a terrorist organization. But when you see what's going on with regard to the internet, the violence, the inspiration, the videos of violence, and on and on and on, and a lot of the rhetoric that uh, uh, is being spewed out of a lot of the mouths of the left, to be frank with you, that's inspirational. And by the way, uh, this uh, Dayton incident came after the El Paso uh, incident, and that incident in itself could have inspired this individual, the copycat problem that we run into. So there are a combination of uh, occurrences with regard to someone uh, pulling the trigger, but it has a lot to do with what they're viewing on social media. That's why it was great that the president did mention social media as one of the problems that have to be looked at, investigated, and corrected as we move forward. Right. When we spoke, we, we talked on this show earlier in the week about the contagion effect. I believe it was researchers from Fresno State University that did find a correlation that in the two weeks after a mass shooting, there is an increased chance of another mass shooting happening because there is some sort of contagion effect. And I imagine that has to do with uh, the, the immediacy of social media, how that news and the videos and the infamy spreads almost instantly. That's why on this show, we don't show the face and we don't say the name anymore of these uh, of these terrorists, of these mass shootings, so as not to give them even a moment of airtime, a moment of the infamy that they so crave. Steve, I appreciate your analysis. Thanks so much for being on the show. Coming up next.